install these BBK shorty headers on my 2014 Mustang with the 3.7 V6. Uh, there's various mods on the car like the cold air intake, MMR water pump pulley, cherry bomb glass pack mufflers with custom tips, 373 gears, aluminum one piece drive shaft. Uh, so if you want to see all that and more, check out the Mustang playlist on the channel for everything you've missed so far to get up to date. And just for the record, I'm installing these, and then I'm also immediately after be installing uh, AMR ported upper and lower intake manifolds. And then we're going to take it back to the track and see what the improvement was. If you want to see what it ran as is, go check that video out. But after we get these headers and the ported uh, manifolds on there, I'm going back and we'll see what the improvement is. Anyways, this is going to be the install video, so I'm going to show you how to install these. Um, I've read a whole bunch of reviews on different sites, different vendor sites that sell these, and uh, mostly good reviews, but there is a ton of people saying how difficult it is, and it's a pain in the ass, and it took them all day, and this and that. Uh, a lot of people were saying that the hardware and the gaskets that are included are junk, because there was uh, several people claiming they installed them and they had an exhaust leak. Uh, that the gaskets did not seal properly and that they uh, replaced the gaskets with factory gaskets and then they had no more leak. Um, people complaining about the joint with the downpipe there and the header not lining up and not sealing correctly. Uh, people complaining that the hardware they included for that joint uh, was crappy. And so we're going to find out about all that. I had thought about, you know, since there were so many reviews saying that. And again, there was even more reviews that no issues whatsoever. Uh, but I think a lot of novice people were trying to install these. And maybe that's the source of some of those reviews. Maybe they weren't installed correctly or whatever. Because initially I was like, alright, well I'm going to go buy good gaskets then and, and uh, good hardware. But then I thought, you know, maybe what it comes with is just fine. Maybe those are just inexperienced people. Maybe they're not. But I'm going to install it with what it comes with. Do everything properly proper torque specs and heat cycles and all that to break the gasket in and whatnot and see if we have any issues so i'm going to install everything as it comes with the hardware and gaskets that it comes with and see if i have any issues so we'll find out at the end of this video if that happens to me so if that does become an issue then we'll just go get new gaskets and better hardware and remedy the situation but i'm really curious and wanting to install what it comes with to see if i have any issues because like i said i have a hunch that maybe it's maybe it's not uh, the most experienced people installing them that are having these issues so we will find out so you're probably going to want to get the car up uh, i'm thinking these bolts here for the flange is going to be it maybe easier to get from the bottom with a long extension and maybe even a swivel joint uh, so i intend on having to lift the car up for that it's always better to have uh, more than one option angle of attack anyways uh, so you can see it's wet. I went ahead and sprayed the bolts that I can get to. I'm assuming there's bolts on the bottom as well, so I'll have to spray those from the bottom. So I went ahead and hit all these bolts that I can with PB Blaster. I'm going to get the front lifted up and get any bottom bolts with PB Blaster. And do that first to get those rusty uh, bolts soaking with uh, penetrating oil. So my personal go-to is PB Blaster. Uh, that way hopefully we don't have any issues um, breaking them loose. All right, so for me, these are half inch. I got no play, so that's great. You want a nice tight fit on these rusty ass bolts, nuts, whatever. You can see they're half inch. Maybe you can, maybe you can't because the sun. Um, again, it's going to come in real handy to have a whole bunch of, you know, like a decent array of tools, different size uh, sockets, you know, short ones, long ones, longer ones. Uh, you obviously need one deep enough to get these out. Um, swivel joints if you have and stuff like that so if you just have a basic toolkit with just you know it, it, yeah you're probably not going to be able to get this off you are going to need some 
extensions and uh, possibly even swivel joints, but we'll see what I need. I'll document it along the way. Oh man, I gotta take this heat shield off. Spray these too, then I, I didn't think about I gotta take that heat shield off because I was like, oh, I'll just leave it on there, but there's at least one bolt hiding behind it, so we gotta take these heat shields off to get to those bolts, and these things are notorious for rounding off, so uh, when you spray these, you want to spray these as well and let them soak. So I'm going to hit those real quick before I get started here. So this should probably go without saying, but definitely use a six-point socket in the interest of not rounding the head of the bolts and nuts. Also, you want to disconnect the negative terminal on your battery, stuff it down in there, uh, because um, you're going to want your ECU to relearn for these headers. So you don't just want to throw them on and then run the car, because the car's going to be like, well, something changed. It's, you know, it's going to notice the different flow. So you want to reset your ECU by disconnecting the battery. That way you can relearn for the additional flow that it has now. All right, so those little bolts on the heat shield, at least on mine, were extremely tight. Um, they're 5 sixteenths. Uh, so definitely hit those with some PB and uh, let them set for a while. Maybe hit them twice, like hit it, let it set for 20 minutes, and then hit it again. You might have to use uh, 3 8 This is quarter inch, and I barely had enough torque with that to break those free. So you might have to use a 3 8 drive with a 5 16 socket. But yeah, definitely soak those really well because they were tight as hell. So yeah, that one I barely got free, and then this one just broke on me. What the shit wasn't in the way? So, so far on this side, I've got all the bolts loose. Uh, I haven't started on the flange yet, but I mean all the manifold bolts uh, it's easiest to get these I, I got the back two from underneath and then found out I was making it harder on myself than I had to just it's a lot easier to get them from up top here just because you can't see them doesn't mean you can't get them just feel around you can feel them slide your socket and extension over pop your ratchet on and, and break them free from up here so so far uh, I got all of them on this side and about to go to the next one and having a, a pivot head ratchet like this helps a lot too all right, so I got the bolts out on both sides. Uh, one thing I noticed, I thought maybe it was a pattern, but some of them, the shaft came out along with the nut, and others just the nut came off. And I thought since upper and lower on this side matched that maybe it was supposed to be like that. But on this side was completely different. The bottom side came out like this, top side came out like that. So I think it's just a matter of whether or not your nut seized on there. Um, so that side pretty much just popped free this one was it almost looked like this shaft here the rod or threaded rod whatever you want to call it it almost looked like it was bent a little and so the manifold wasn't wanting to slide off of it not that i need it to yet anyways but so that one i just tapped down here with my pickle fork and a mini sledge lightly and it started vibrating off so when I mean, you go to remove these you might have issues with them sticking on that threaded rod if your uh, rod stays in your head so now I'm gonna break these free and in all honesty it may have been better to leave one of these back ones in uh, so this doesn't move around on you while you're trying to break those free or depending on space it may be better to have them all out so you can move it around as needed it just depends on the situation so I'm going to try to break these free now. I've hit them twice with PB Blaster over the past hour or so. Um, if it wiggles around and I can't get them to break free because the manifold and downpipe are moving around, then I'll just put one of those back bolts back in. So let me try to break these things free. And these are different size. They are larger, so i got to figure out what size they are here real quick. And uh, those ones are definitely probably going to be easier from under the car I'm thinking with a, I don't know this one back here I don't think I can get anything up there without a swivel joint we'll see and I'll let you know so I'm about out of daylight here but I finally got one of them off <clears throat> and um, so yeah that was fun um, those were so freaking tight um, well, for one, I have a, what is it, 1,000 foot-pound torque, or, yeah, impact. Uh, and I couldn't even get them to break free with my impact. I had to feed all different lengths of extensions and sockets and whatnot with uh, pivot heads, by the way. It was the only way I was able to get that one. 
Let me show you what I mean here. This is a pivot head, okay? It lets it move a little bit as opposed to, well, that's just the difference. If your socket doesn't pivot on the end, they, a lot of times if you push them all the way down, then they won't pivot, see? So you gotta pop it up to utilize that joint. So anyways, uh, that's how you got that combination. And uh, whether, you're, depending on which one of those you were trying to get out, you needed different lengths of stuff. Uh, one of them, the front I need less, the back I need more, and you gotta kinda wiggle and finesse, like I said, different lengths, extensions and such up there uh, to get it. I'm having an issue on the other side because I can't get to one of them. I'll get to that in a minute. Anyway, so, oh, that one's like seven or 800 foot pounds of torque. <clears throat> Sorry. It's, I can't remember how much it is, but I just bought that $300 beast there. It's a thousand foot pounds, earthquake, half inch drive uh, from Harbor Freight, and it still wouldn't even break those bolts free. That's how tight they were. I had to use a giant ass half inch drive extendable ratchet. Uh, thank goodness it was strong enough it didn't break on me. Those bolts were so tight I thought I was breaking them off, but thankfully they backed out, so you might break them. Um, but mine didn't break and they came out once I loosened them and got a, a turn on or turn or two on with the manually, then I was able to put my impacts on it and power them out the rest of the way. Uh, but even my thousand foot pound one couldn't break them free. That's how tight they were. So here's a comparison real quick while we're at it. So you can see, maybe because of the lighting, that that's definitely a lot bigger hole. The primaries are bigger, obviously. Um, like I said, it might be hard to tell, but because of uh, lighting. But down in there, further, like right around in here, I can see where it chokes it down there, which does not occur on these. And then on the exit is probably where the biggest difference is. It chokes it down real bad right there. And then you can see how much more space there is there on those. So definitely considerably more flow. So I probably should have stated in the beginning this is a 2014. And the reason I'm coming to that conclusion now is because they market these as fitting any Mustang with the 3.7 V6 from 2011 or 12 up to 16 or 17. Um, but this hardware I mentioned, so there's a replacement hardware they give you. Okay, well, how am I supposed to do that when they don't come out? So they have these little, I mean, unless my nut on the back was supposed to come off instead of spinning this whole thing. So that is exactly what is supposed to happen. These studs are not supposed to come out of your factory manifolds. The nut is supposed to come off. Um, the reason I can tell you I know this now is because I did eventually end up with, uh, unbeknownst to me, two exhaust leaks, which I go over one in depth later in this video, so make sure you stay tuned for that. And uh, we got that corrected and we'll cover that. Uh, but this right here, and again, ignore the background here, I'm trying to tell you what happened. Um, if you reuse these factory bolts like I did, because I didn't think I could get a Dremel down in there to cut them off to use this hardware I'm showing here, um, you will get a leak, which is what happened to me. So apparently, because those things have a little button on them that only let them tighten in so far, on the header, they don't go in far enough so it doesn't clamp that uh, closed correctly. And you actually get a, a, an exhaust leak right there at that joint. So don't do that. Cut them off if you have to, which is exactly what I ended up having to do. I cut them off from the bottom and I spun the flange to reach them. So then the, the problem I'm having on the passenger side, I've got the bottom one loose here. But this top one, there's less room on this side than there is on the other to get extensions and whatnot up in there. And so far, I haven't been able to get anything up in there because you want that socket on there all the way um so i haven't been able to get anything on 
that I'm comfortable with because of how tight it is uh, to break that free yet. So I'm still working on it. If I can't get it, then what I'm going to do is pull this uh, manifold off here. That way I can move the exhaust around to give myself more room. And if I have to, which I might, I'm going to unbolt it up in there wherever it connects right there, I think. And uh, just basically drop it. That way I, I, will, I should then have room to uh, get what I need up in there to break that free. The only problem with doing that, if you drop that exhaust, this exhaust is going to turn on you as you're trying to get that extremely tight bolt loose. Um, so I'm going to try like hell to get it as is or at most um, pop the manifold off the studs. That way I can push it down a little bit to give myself just a little more clearance. Um, so we'll see what happens and then I'll let you know what I ended up doing. All right, so I got this side. Uh, basically, I had to use this giant effing thing. And uh, I was able to get that up through there. I think having that unbolted and loose so I could move around a little bit helped. Uh, matter of fact, as I was hitting that with my impact to uh, get that out, uh, the whole thing fell off. So got it out with that. These were 9 16 to the best of my knowledge. Uh, I don't know if because of the rust or what, I had difficulty getting a 9 16 on some of them, so I used a 15 in that case, which worked except for one. It rounded it, after which I managed to get a 14 millimeter on it, and then it I was able to get it out. So you got to be careful with that. But they're actually 9 16 so at least on my car. Now, I know some people said they reused these gaskets and they were fine. I'm not going to do that. I've never been one to reuse gaskets. Um, actually, a matter of fact, one time I did reuse gaskets on accident. I forgot to replace and they were actually uh, header gaskets. This was a long time ago. And yeah, they leaked like crazy. Uh, they weren't the metal ones like this, um, but still. So I'm going to pop these off and like I said... So people were saying they were having issues with exhaust leaks with the stuff provided. So, uh, as an experiment, I'm going to use what is provided, do everything properly, and see if I have any leaks. So, that'll help you guys determine whether or not to trust that stuff, potentially. Uh, me as well. So, obviously, I'm really hoping it works because I don't want to have to do this twice, but... Uh, for the sake of trying to answer that question for you guys, I'm going to be using the gaskets and the hardware it came with. Alright, so there's that one off. Uh, if you still have your threaded rod there, they're going to catch up on that. There's three layers to it. Uh, so you can get behind it with a little thin screwdriver or a pick like this to kind of like help pull it forward off. And then once you get it loose, you can kind of just wiggle them over the studs. Uh, but if you guys do want to upgrade your gasket or don't want to trust that or whatever you uh i would recommend felpro it's what i always use all right so on the driver's side here there's this bracket and uh the gasket is caught under that so to remove the gasket you're gonna have to remove the bolt nut whatever to that bracket so you can get your gasket off so if you still have some of your studs in the head you can just go ahead and slip the new one over if all of yours came out then you'll kind of have to put one on each end and maybe get some help, hold them in place, slip the gasket over as you feed the manifold on. But um, me, I got the stud sticking out, so I'm going to go ahead and feed both my gaskets over there and then uh, slip the, man the uh, headers over them. So I was trying to match these gaskets up here with the old ones, see which way they go on, and that's... What it looks like correct is not correct, so my best advice for you, find which side you need and match it up that way, because I was going to say this rounded edge here, see how the back's, mosquito, see how the back's sharp? I typically put that side on the head and put the rounded side on the headers, but that doesn't fit these this way. These is the opposite, so match them up with whichever header you're installing we'll see now this one might be this one's bass backwards see what the hell 
This one has the sharp edge facing the head. This one has the round edge facing the head. So I don't know if it's because it doesn't matter or maybe somebody didn't pay attention when they were making these. Anyways, I'm matching up a corresponding header. That way you get them on right. So these are wanting to slip off on me. If I push them all the way back flush, they're just sliding right off. So you kind of got to have them catty cornered like that. So be careful when you put the header on. Make sure that your gasket doesn't fall off or get pinched or anything. You barely bump it and it's going to fall off. All right, so I got the passenger side started here. Uh, very little drama. Slipped it down in there. You're going to kind of move that out of the way. Remember, you got that bracket unbolted. Um, I had to kind of wiggle and finesse and if I started on the front then the rear wouldn't line up and then if I tried to, you know you just kind of got to work with it to get it to fit um so uh I don't know 20 seconds of wiggling and I got it to slide on there so that one's on pretty much drama free but this side you cannot get it in without removing this now once you have it you know bolted up then it'll clear this but to get it in there this thing's in the way so later when i was attending to the exhaust leak i actually barely managed to get it past this steering shaft so you may be able to get it past all right so i'm back out here again today i cannot get these last two i got the other side everything started i cannot get these last two on the passenger side in because these two go on the bottom and I just cannot get my hand in there and even one even I got the tip in the hole But then when you go to tip it up to push it in it's hitting the primary so I doused the crap out of this with PB blaster and what I'm doing is removing the nut from the thread and then I'm gonna cause Remember you got you can put a little socket on there, and it is uh, let's see what size five millimeter so Sprayed the crap out of a PB. I already have this one moving. I haven't got to this one yet. So this is how I'm getting the nut off. And I'm going to put the thread back into the head. And then I'll be able to slide the, the manifold, the, the header, onto all the studs. And then I'll be able to install the nut and get it on that way. Because, yeah, I, I just cannot get these in here uh, in the head with these new ones. Because the primaries are so large, there's not room. Not only for my hand, but it just literally won't go in because it's hitting the primary. So I have no choice but to take these nuts off uh, on the, these couple on the passenger side here. Also, see, you can see I got this one popped on here. Like I said, you have to move this. So you can see that's free. Uh, there's a bolt up here. You loosen. And you might want to mark that down in there to make sure you put it back on. The same, it goes on there. <clears throat> Otherwise, uh, you might put it on and your steering wheel will be crooked. And then down at the bottom, there's a bolt down there too. I think you can see the hole right there. It's basically the same thing. And then uh, this, it might stick at first, you know, but it'll move up and down once you release that bolt, which is a larger bolt for some reason. Uh, and then if you turn the wheel a little bit left and right with both bolts out, and with this thing shoved down as far as it'll go, once you remove that bolt, um, it'll pop off of here. And then you can move it around so you can get this header on there. And then you just need to uh, reinstall your steering arm there. Alright, so I got all these little bastards back in there. Um, I couldn't find a torque spec on these, but you can just compare with the other ones that are left behind. If you have them left behind like I did. You see that little center divider between the threads? You can compare that. So there's one I installed right there. They snug up right around there, so I just pretty much turn them to that point. Now these are aluminum heads, so you don't want to over tighten it or it will strip the threads. So I just use a little quarter inch ratchet with that itty bitty five millimeter socket and uh, installed them until they snug down and looked about even with those. Definitely don't want them too terribly tight or you strip the threads, so. Now I should be able to slide this header on. All right, guys. So I finally got this one finished installed. I don't have the downpipe hooked up yet, but my header's fully installed and torqued down and all that. <sighs> Woo! Yeah, uh, the, those people were right. This is a pain in the ass. So I've been at this 
two or three hours now. <laughs> As we discussed, you cannot, um, if your whole studs came out instead of just the nuts coming off, you can't get them back in with this new header because the primaries are too big. So as I showed, I had to separate the nut from the rod, reinstalled the rod. Then I was able to slip my header on, put all the nuts on. This one right here, okay, first of all, you're going to want to install all the bottom ones first. You have to leave this loose as hell um, to get this one tightened down. Initially, I put, where is it? Initially, I put my ratcheting wrench on there, and then I got it stuck because as it started to tighten up, it brought these primaries too close to that stud, and then I couldn't get it back off. Almost completely screwed myself on that. So then I had to use another uh, open end here and about a 30 second of a turn at a time back it out, which took about 20 minutes until I could finally get this wrench out so the combination I ended up using to get that was first of all half inch uh, this one wouldn't fit okay take a good look at that your typical half inch because the longer it is the easier you can get down in there because I was using a small one at first which fit uh, so I'm like and I kept dropping the wrench and could barely get my hand down in there. I mean, it was like half the length of this one. So I went to get a longer one and then it wouldn't fit because the head's too big. So now this real old school one I've had for God knows how long with rust on it. You see the head's a lot smaller. It fit and I could barely get like a 30 second. One turn it'd be like a 30 second. Then I'd have to flip it and then I'd get a 16th of a turn. Then I'd flip it. Then I'd get a 30 second and so forth. And that only really worked while it was loose. Once it started getting tight, I couldn't hardly get that in anymore. And then I had to use my line wrench here in half inch. So a combination really in the end to get it tightened up. A combination between my line wrench and this one. Because I couldn't, I could only get it so far with this and then I couldn't get it back on. And then I would switch to my line wrench because it had a different pitch on it. And then I could get that on and get a, a little bit of turn. Then I could go back to this. And then I would go back to this. And then I would go back to this. And then back to this. So I had to keep switching back and forth to get that bastard tightened down. Um, worst case scenario, if you cut the edge off here a little bit. on So if yours doesn't fit, you can you, you cut off the edges so that it will fit. Okay? So thankfully i had this line wrench and i was able to go back and forth between the two and it worked so that one is a freaking nightmare don't tighten any of the other ones down matter of fact don't even install them until you get that one uh hand uh, mostly snug down against your flange here and then you can worry about the other ones okay so then like i said if you use the closed end wrench you can't get it off once it starts to tighten down this one you can Get in there with something like that, no problem, or the ratcheting wrench. Obviously, the ones on top are no issue. Uh, but this one right here, the only way to get to that, I started out using a quarter-inch drive. But then my socket was too shallow as it got too tight, and then it wouldn't fit anymore. So then I had to switch to 3 3H drive with a deep well socket with a pivot or a swivel joint on it. To get it tightened down and even bbk's own instructions at least i did not see where they gave a torque spec and well this is why because you can't even get a damn torque wrench in there so <laughs> yeah forget the torque spec uh, you know in my other videos in fact people complain because I'd, I'd give a torque spec and i'd be like here's your torque spec for this but i know what i'm doing so i'm just going to tighten it down and i do know what i do I'm doing and you know people would uh, patronize me for that and say oh what your arm's a torque wrench now and you know i tried to explain that sometimes when working on cars there is uh instances where you're not going to be able to use a torque wrench and this is one such instance so you have to use your best judgment here bbk didn't even provide a torque spec and this is probably why because you can't get a torque wrench in there so just snug them up real good 
typically um, you work from the center out on a header like this in a crisscross pattern so you go top from bottom and then work from the center out so that's what I did I would torque one of these center ones first go to the, the next one and the next one and then do the outside on this side and then do the outside ones on this side make sure you don't forget about any of them and then I went back over them about two or three more times just snug them up real good I mean don't hawk the crap on there the ones on the bottom are pretty much impossible to hawk on there anyways especially this one so basically as tight as you can get that one is pretty much how tight you want the rest of them so just snug them up real good but don't freaking hulk them on there um so this one's finished that's the only one you guys probably really need help with in that insight this one should be a lot freaking easier so i did the hard side first this should be a cakewalk in comparison it looks like that one's going to be a little difficult to get to but i can actually get my hand under there unlike the other side so i can get a you know a little quarter inch drive in there or something and uh there's one down there so i mean it's still not super easy on this side but it's a lot easier than the other side so i'm gonna get this one torqued down too and then um hook up my down pipes and then i'm gonna go over break in and all that all right i'm gonna make it long story short here so at this point in the video i had discovered that my header flange where it bolts to the head was actually warped and I went on talking about it for quite a while which is making the video way too long you see the gap there um, so if you want to know about that uh, check out the video uh, I posted a video about the header issue I'll put a link to that in the description here it'll also be in the Mustang playlist if you want to know more about that uh, but in the end I had to in the end I ended up double gasketing this because BBK never sent me my header Alright, you got both sides fully installed now. Here's a few tips that are going to help you out. So if you recall on this side, I used the hardware that it came with because uh, the old hardware came out like it was supposed to. So, and with what they provide you, um, those will go way further out than that. But then I couldn't really get uh, my nuts and shit on there because you're supposed to put washer Okay, on, on the bottom side of this flange, after you start your uh, threaded rod there, you go washer, then lock washer, then nut. So at this point in the video, I remind you that earlier in the video, I stated that you absolutely have to use the hardware that they gave you. You cannot reuse the old studs. Um, so in lieu of that, here are some tips for installing these. All right, so then also, um, it's difficult to get these started. Uh, I said previously to chase the threads if you could. Uh, the hardware, like this nut spins down on it easy, but like it doesn't want to go in there that well. Um, you can like, at least for me, I got it started a few turns and then it would get, it would stop and I couldn't get it anymore. So what you do is uh, install this nut all the way up there and see where it's smooth. It'll stop there and as long as you're not cross threaded, uh, that nut will lock on to this rod and then it'll allow you to spin it in through there. I got it currently sticking out, oh, I don't know, four or five millimeters on the back. So, Also, don't forget you should uh, stick these through that slide flange. You need to slide that flange up and stick them through there first and then start them. Um, also, one side has more threads than the other. The short threaded side is what goes up into the header, so you want the the long section of thread pointing towards the ground all right this is the kind of shit people were talking about with their crappy hardware i didn't have too much problem on the other side but on this side i'm having an issue with getting these in uh, like i said you can chase the threads if you have the correct tap and die i don't know what size it is sorry i guess you could check that before you even get these on here if you have the means to do so but uh this one's so tight because the threads are just so crappy on uh, the flange. The bolt, like the nut, went on to it no problem at all. But I tried to use that little nut trick I just showed. Where I put the nut on up till the smooth part in the middle. And it stops and then you can turn it in. Well this one was so tight that 
my nut uh, began to spin over top of that smooth part. So uh, this is the pain in the ass method I'm having to use now. I am clamping on it just about as hard as I can each time with this small vice grip and having to turn it uh, less than a quarter at a time and then because this is really starting to hurt my hand from having to unclamp this over and over and over and over and over and over again trying to get this nut driven in far enough I'm using that to release it each time so yeah I've been at this like an hour almost flush and I need to go a little further uh, torque spec on this is going to be about 30 to 35 foot pounds of torque. I'm afraid if you do it too tight, you'll break the hardware. Um, <clears throat> so definitely don't do that. Also, when you tighten these down, walk it. Go back and forth from one side to the other to kind of like, like teeter-totter it on like this. Because you don't want to get one side all the way tight and then it's stuck on a bind. So you, you go back and forth one side to the other a little bit at a time until you get it all tightened down. Uh, but like I said, theirs will keep going and going. So use your best judgment. Now, don't forget to reconnect your steering rod. So, uh, mine should still be lined up because I didn't move it or anything. So, I'll... Ah, damn it. <clears throat> Remember that pulls up and down. And one or, uh, one or both ends had a notch for the bolt to go through. So, make sure you line that notch up. You'll see it. It's like it's cut out like this for the bolt to fit through. So, you got to line it up so it'll fit so i gotta get my bottom and top bolt back in in the appropriate position and then over here don't forget you had this stupid thing flopping around on you so make sure you bolt that back up to the head where it goes uh, we reconnect our battery and then we're ready to break this gasket in so as soon as i get all this stuff uh hooked back up uh we'll go over that here right all right first and foremost yes this was a huge pain in the ass and even this side I'm like well this could be a lot easier because this is the easy side putting it back together but it was still kind of a pain to get those uh, flange bolts down there to the down pipe uh, basically it was I had to use that long ass extension right there and uh, on one of them that swivel joint so yeah this uh, was one huge nightmare like I said this uh, you weren't able to that one back bolt, the, the best you could do was combination of box wrenches and a line wrench and all that. So that was a nightmare. And yeah, it was real fun. So I'm uh, probably six to eight hours in now. Finally done here. So yeah, it's a real pain in the ass. Uh, unless you have a lot of tools, uh, probably not going to work out for you. You're going to need a lot of super long extensions like what I just showed over there. Uh, various box wrenches maybe even the line wrenches like I showed on the other side because I have to quit kept switching from one to the other or you would have to cut and modify one like I said that might work uh, but you're still gonna need some very long extensions at a minimum and uh, getting those bolts off was a freaking nightmare I mean uh, you could probably do it with 3 8 stuff maybe with a 3 8 breaker bar and get up in there but yeah those were uh, I mean, everyone's might not be as tight as mine, but I could also see a scenario where some of them could be longer. And I've even had stuff like that round off before, and it was a nightmare. And if you have that happen, you're going to need Irwin bolt extractors uh, to get that off, and it's still not easy. Um, so if you're one of those people that's got plenty of money to spare and throw around and don't really care, then yeah, you might want to pay a shop to do it. But if uh, you're trying to save money or you like the satisfaction of doing it yourself like I do, then uh, have fun because, yeah, it's, uh, it's a pain in the ass. All right, so like I said, uh, I was discussing throughout this video, uh, you know, maybe these gaskets leak and whatnot because people don't install it correctly, uh, especially now knowing that you can't get a torque wrench down on either side. Uh, that could be an issue if you don't torque it down properly. But as far as breaking these in, this is where a lot of people make a mistake, okay? Uh, these gaskets are going to burn. So first off, don't freak out. When you start it, after a few minutes, you'll start seeing a bunch of smoke come up, okay? That's normal. Those, those gaskets are going to burn, and that's how they seat. And because of that, a lot of people will throw these headers on and just go freaking racing. Just full throttle down the road, and that's a good way to get... Well, blow your gasket out and ruin the seal. So, especially with these having reports of 
the gasket's not being so great, you definitely want to break them in properly. So basically what you do, start it. You're going to see the smoke, like I said. Um, let the car get the full operation temp. Uh, definitely pop the hood, by the way. Let it warm up all the way, and then just let it sit there at uh, full operating temp at, for like 10 minutes. The smoke might stop, or it might still be smoking a little. And then you want to let it cool down. Um, pretty much a complete heat cycle. So let it get nice and hot and then idle for 10 minutes and then let it cool down. And, uh, for several hours until it's completely cool. Then go for a very light drive. Okay. Start it back up. Let it warm up again before you drive. It might start smoking again a little bit. Go for a very light drive. Like don't go more than 10% throttle. I would even try to stay under 10% if you can. Just drive it around normal, 55, 60, um, probably stay off the highway. But, yeah, just go drive it around for uh, 10, 15 minutes. That way you're actually getting some flow through there more than just idle, and then we get those headers real hot driving around. Bring it back, shut it off, let it cool down completely again, and then you should be good 100%. So at this point in the video, I'd like to remind you that earlier in the video I stated not only did I have a exhaust leak from the header to downpipe uh, junction, but I also had an exhaust leak from the header flange to head. Uh, there was a leak there, which I briefly hit on, where there was a, a gap literally big enough for me to stick my fingernail between the header flange and the gasket against the head. So that's obviously a leak. And like I said in the video uh, previously, there's I posted videos on that uh, explaining the issue and my dealings with BBK pertaining to that. Um, but I actually ended up double gasketing that to fix that issue, which did fix that issue because after I double gasketed, there was no longer a gap there. Uh, but then I found out the junction between the header and downpipe was leaking as well. Again, as I hit on earlier in this video, which apparently required the use of the supplied hardware from BBK um, to attach the downpipe to the header. Now, the instructions do not state that you absolutely must use this hardware to eliminate this possibility of a leak, but that ended up being reality, so you cannot reuse the studs from the factory manifold to seal that.